This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1790. Minimal Wellness Dietary Principles, part one, Whole Foods, by Becca Shern of minimalwellness.com. And I'm Dr. Neil. Hey there, happy Sunday and welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I simply read to you from the best health and fitness blogs for free. This is kind of like an audiobook, but with articles instead and from a bunch of different authors and always with permission from the sites, of course. Now on Fridays, I do something a little different. That's where I answer your questions. Reading and listening to and responding to your questions is one of my favorite parts of the show. I thank you in advance so much for sending those in. And remember, you can send in your question directly via email if you'd like by emailing it directly to health at oldpodcast.com or you can send in your audio question by going to oldpodcast.com slash ask. All right, and with that, Let's jump right in and hear today's article and continue optimizing your life. Minimal Wellness Dietary Principles, Part 1, Whole Foods, by Becca Shern of minimalwellness.com. Diet is a fascinating topic. There's an endless amount of nutritional nuance, refinement, and data available. With all that information, it's possible to create a prescriptive personalized diet. Yet, What is appropriate for one person's diet may not necessarily be ideal or work for another. We all have different taste preferences. We come from different families and cultures. We have different health profiles and resources. And we have unique life circumstances. As a consequence, there are innumerable challenges with trying to develop an ideal diet that will work well for everyone. Be leery of a diet claiming it is the only way to eat healthfully that unnecessarily eliminates foods or food groups or one that makes sweeping claims about the results of eating in accordance with the diet. Lose fat, get lean, and easy are some of the red flags indicating the author has an agenda other than your health. Perhaps they're after part of the $60 billion Americans spend annually trying to lose weight. That said, nutrition is also not rocket science, and having a basic framework of food choices on which to build a diet is a good place to start. One of my favorite pieces of diet advice is from the book in Defense of Food by Michael Pollan, in which he states, quote, eat food, not too much, mostly plants, end quote. His guidance is brilliant in its restraint, but requires a little more detail to be fully understood and put into use. I will expand on Pollan's three points. Eat food. Food in this context means edible items that have been grown, raised, caught, hunted, or foraged. Note, what is missing from that list? items that have been processed, boxed, or packaged. I prefer to clarify what food means with the terms whole food or real food. Eating real, whole foods that have not been industrially processed, either prepared at home or from a food purveyor who prepares food from scratch is the best way to ensure your diet is nutritious and healthful. Although I am a staunch advocate of in-home meal preparation, I'm also a realist. Many of us lead hectic lives and not everyone has the skills although a few basic skills are all you really need, or interest to cook. Additionally, eating a meal at a quality restaurant can be both a healthful and pleasurable experience. So what qualifies as a whole or real food? Whole foods in the most literal sense of the term are completely unprocessed and in their raw, natural state. But as with many things related to nutrition, a little perspective and flexibility is helpful. Do you need to consume only raw, completely unprocessed foods in order to consume a whole foods diet? No. Cooking and baking are forms of food preparation, not of food processing. Therefore, you can consume a whole foods diet while employing those preparation methods. The lineup of whole foods include vegetables, fruits, meat, seafood, eggs, legumes, whole grains, fats, tea, and coffee. Then there are minimally processed but still very real foods cultured plain dairy products like kefir and yogurt, unrefined oils, fermented vegetables, high-quality cheese, and some beverages. It's okay to occasionally consume pre-made items that have been minimally processed and have relatively few ingredients. Less than five ingredients is the guideline pollen recommends, and that I agree with. Take note of what's not on the preceding lists. Processed grain products like bread, pasta, chips, crackers, pizza crust, pastry, cereal. Processed meats sugar, candy, and desserts. While none of those things should be forbidden, unless you have a food allergy, of course, they're not nutritious and should be consumed with far less frequency than someone eating the standard American diet. 
Sugar is particularly insidious and should be drastically reduced in most people's diets. Consider that anytime you eat an item from a package, container, or box, it was almost certainly heavily processed and made by a large company or corporation. Even if the company claims to have your health in their best interest, they exist to make money. And if they're a publicly traded company, they exist to make money for their shareholders. By definition of their business structure, their priority is money, not your health. Yes, some products made by food companies are nutritious, but the vast majority may not be. Luckily, by making unprocessed whole foods the bulk of your diet, you can take more personal control of your health and be less influenced by industry corporations. Keep in mind, the foundation of a healthy diet is to eat primarily whole foods without adhering to unnecessary constraints on your intake. Be discerning about the foods you consume with the goal of nourishment, not restriction. Although consuming whole foods will give your body the essential nutrients it needs to function optimally, it's only part of the optimal diet equation. Learning to moderate your intake and consuming primarily plants are also vitally important. You just listened to the post titled Minimal Wellness Dietary Principles, Part 1, Whole Foods by Becca Shern of minimalwellness.com. Now, when you do what you love, like running, racing, or enjoying great outdoors, you want to do it for life. Inside Tracker can help. They're all about optimizing your life, as I like to say on this show. Inside Tracker was founded in 2009 by leading scientists in aging, genetics, and biometrics from MIT, Tufts, and Harvard. Using their patented algorithm, Inside Tracker analyzes your body's data to provide you with a clear picture of what's going on inside you and to offer you science backed recommendations for positive diet and lifestyle changes. Then, Inside Tracker tracks your progress every day, every step of the way toward reaching your performance goals and living a longer, healthier life. Now, for a limited time, you can get 25% off the entire Inside Tracker store. Go to insidetracker.com slash OHD to get your discount code and to start using Inside Tracker today. That's insidetracker.com slash OHD for 25% off the entire Inside Tracker store. And I have that linked in this episode's description. And now for my commentary. At Pasteur University, where I'm the department chair and serve as an assistant professor, we also use the whole foods approach. And we kind of expand on what Becca was mentioning when it comes to defining a whole food. Here's what we ask our students to think about. There are five questions we have our students ask themselves to determine whether a food is really a whole food. One, can you imagine that food growing? Two, how long has that food been known to nourish human beings? Now, some people interpret that to mean, oh, so you guys follow the paleo diet. No, it's just that we know more about whole foods and their influence on human health than we do about some of these newer preservatism things that are being used. And so that's really what we're talking about. It's not that we follow a paleo diet per se. Three, is it the whole food or part of the entity of the food? Four, What's been done to the food since it was harvested? And five, how many ingredients does it have? And I agree with the five ingredients or fewer rule. If you haven't read Michael Pollan's book, I highly recommend it. I also highly recommend the book Food Politics by Marion Nessel if you're interested in corporations and their influence on food culture. Now, that's not to say I don't consume foods out of a box. Don't forget, pizza, donuts, and french fries are like my favorite foods, but it doesn't mean I consume those all the time. And if I do eat those, I try and limit how much I consume. So yes, we do need to be realistic. But if we can kind of gravitate towards eating more whole, unprocessed foods more often, chances are we'll just probably feel a whole lot better the majority of the time. All right, that'll do it from me for today. And I'll be back here in just a second with our bonus episode for the week. So stay tuned for that where your optimal life awaits.